1964, at the end of the first era of Jim Crow in this country, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Andrew Young paid a visit to President Lyndon Johnson in the White House. And they begged of him a Voting Rights Act. They said in Texas, in Mississippi, in Georgia, in the states of the former Confederacy, it is nearly impossible for a black man or a black woman to cast their ballot. The literacy test, the poll tax, the how many jelly beans are in this jar before you're allowed to register to vote, mm -hmm. all are disproportionately used against African Americans. And that's why in some counties in Mississippi where African Americans total 70% of the population, there isn't a single African American on the voter rolls. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, they said this is not a democracy, not if so many of us are not able to vote. And President Johnson said to Dr. King, I would love to help you because I know that you're right, but I do not have the power. The members of Congress, especially from the South, will never vote for this. And so Dr. King and future Ambassador Young left the White House. Ambassador Young dejected, asked Dr. King, well, what do we do now? And Dr. King turned to Ambassador Young and said, we've got to go out there and find the president some power. And over the course of the next year, in churches like this one, under the leadership of men and women like Dr. Taylor, in congregations and among people just like ourselves, this country gave the president that power. And in fact, within a year, he called a joint session of Congress together, both the House of Representatives and the United States Senate, and he convened them to ask them to take action and to pass the 1965 Voting Rights Act. And when he began that address, he referenced not George Washington or Thomas Jefferson or the founding fathers of our country, but he referred all of those powerful men and women to the example of John Lewis, because a week before on Bloody Sunday, March 7th of 1965, John Lewis and other courageous Americans attempted to march from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery for voting rights, to make sure that this democracy represented every single one of us. And as we all know, he was beaten within an inch of his life, trying to cross the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And his willingness to go to the dangerous places and not satisfy himself with the comfort of the status quo is what finally compelled President Johnson and those powerful men and women before him to do the right thing and to pass that bill and to sign it into law and to usher in the first true multiracial democracy in the history of this country. It is that very democracy that is under attack right now. And I hope that we find in that precedent the power to act at this moment and to give the current president of the United States the power he needs to do the right thing. And so today I feel so grateful and honored to bring this message to you and to share with you this struggle to make sure that we come through for this country and for the generations that follow us. So I hope we'll look back on this moment in 2021 and be proud of what we did at this moment of truth. Thank you very much for allowing me to join you today.